Hello and welcome to Talking It History, the podcast where we, Matt and Max, talk about works of alternate history, alternate history scenarios, and history in general. Uh, we thought maybe this episode we'd do a smaller episode than usual, kind of like a, a, a mini episode focused on just a single work or a body of work. And this episode we thought we'd talk about a little series by S.M. Sterling, the Draca series. <laughs> uh, Matt, I remember back in high school, you would tell me bits and pieces about this series, and I, I, would, I just had no idea what to think. It just sounded completely insane. I, I couldn't picture how this could possibly be like a cohesive narrative, like with all this crazy background information. Yeah, this the Draca series is really it's really one of those in, really interesting. It was sort of a landmark alternate history series that came out in the late '80s. And basically, quick overview. So basically, the a lot of loyalist slaveholders during the American Revolution they move to South Africa after their their defeat, and they basically create this slaveholding society that it, that over time you know takes in various you know, disaffected groups, and they, cre they create this slaveholding society and empire that takes over all of Africa, then the Middle East, and they fight in everyone, and eventually they take over the whole world. Oh, and, yeah. <laughs> and, <it's, laughs> and the moon, and yes, Mars. In an absurdly small amount of time. Yeah. It's, in, in, like, what, 200 years or so? Yeah, conquers the entire two, planet. 200 years, yeah. And, and it's there's three books, and the first one is Marching Through Georgia, which is basically like a straight-up, like, war novel set in an alternate version of World War II. Right. Like, uh, the Draca have taken over basically all of Africa and the Middle East, mm -hmm. and they're marching against uh, uh, the Nazi empire. Mm -hmm. And it's like at a very unique time during this offensive where they've completely overextended themselves. Mm -hmm. um, you know, they've got all this ridiculous, insane, advanced technology that should not exist in this time period. Yeah. But it doesn't help them too much at this time because they're so they're spread so thin that it's very tooth and yeah. nail. To, yeah, it, to keep this advance from collapsing. And a good way to put this is sort of like they talk about like they have the uh, body armor and and small arms that are like the equivalent of like the 1970s or 80s and the 1940s. It's like this this society, this Draca society as it's been taking over Africa just advances at an insane rate. They right. just have like steam powered cars and like the, <laughs> the steam powered cars in that's the 19, always the like the 1830s or something like that. Oh, it's God. just this crazy and they no one seems to pay attention or care and everything it follows this bizarre technology is like similar but different. So like all cars are steam cars. They develop like gas engines but they're sort of different uh, but so the point is it's the 1940s and the draca have basically what's described as the equivalent of an m1 abrams tank right yeah the, these tanks go super fast they have like 120 millimeter cannons i think they call them like cheetah tanks or something Hond. like that on three Hond, yeah there you it's go. just weird but like the point is is that it is that so the first so marching through georgia is the best one we right. would agree it's it's uh, just a straight up war novel. war novel yeah really it's good and then we get to the next two which are under the yoke and the stone dogs and under the yoke is like it's insane it's basically the equivalent of like the schlocky sleazy like 1970s like exploitation film. It's it's like if you took Caligula and uh, uh, Ilsa Shewolf of the SS and like I don't know Goodbye Uncle Tom, just like all these like really sleazy movies. <laughs> it just combine them all <laughs> together. This is what you get out of it. And it's just like this crazy. And this is basically supposedly like after the they've won this phase of World War II and they've conquered Europe. Like it's the creation of this plantation because the whole point is that they still have slaves. They they call them serfs, which apparently fools everyone for like 150 years. <laughs> right, right. That that they do all this stuff and it's them like creating this plantation and it just we're not going to go too d deep into it because there's some really crazy, gross, and disgusting yeah. stuff. Just just biz just bizarre and weird and like you just there's a few moments where you just scratch your head like really wow. yeah yeah like some like, there's some very explicit lesbian sex scenes <laughs> that are just. <laughs> Make, make you kind of not like shake your head just a yeah. little bit. Good lord. Like it's just crazy. And then just, and then they kill people in the most weird ways. And Pe they people just get like impaled. And just, just and, and, and the, and it's all this crazy stuff. Al also and, like nukes everywhere. Yeah. Like, they, they when, just, when World War II ended, just everyone got nuked. There's, it's, it's, I think 18 total nukes get used or something like that. It's crazy. And so basically the point is, and then like America basically leads what's left of the world against them. And the Stone Dogs is like this Cold War spy thriller. I mean, I can't think of an exact book that would be on point, but uh, there's a lot of like 
race to create the super weapon to wipe each other out. And basically the Draka win, they take some heavy losses. And then the rest of, you know, and for some reason people develop like space travel really quickly. So like the, <laughs> yeah, the remainders, I'm... the surviving Americans get on board this ship that shoots out to like Alpha Centauri to go live on a planet out there, which, you know, that the, which is like the nearest star, but they develop like faster, like almost as fast as light travel. I don't know. It's just crazy stuff. Yeah. And there, there's some spinoff. There's a spinoff book called Dracone, which is uh, a future Draka person gets like dumped into a parallel universe where they just go ape because no one is ready. Cause they've like genetically engineered themselves into being like these perfect soldiers. Right. It, it's a bit like a Beastmaster two through the portal of time kind of situation, yeah. <laughs> fish out of water. And then there's masters of the universe. Yeah, and then there's Dracas, which is a collection of stories in the universe done by other authors. I haven't read it. Is it good? Yeah. Dracas is really good. I, I liked it cause it sort of takes different approaches on the material and it, um, talks, it does, you know, has stories. A lot of them are set in like the 1800s as a Draka like coming around to becoming mm. this country. And then there's some that are set after, you know, their victory in the books. And there's a particularly crazy one in which it talks about like these American soldiers hiding out after the final nuclear exchange in the U S is lost and talks about like this guy named Anson McDonald, who is, you know, a, a Navy admiral and Anson, Mac, I don't know who you, well, Anson McDonald was a pen name used by Robert Heinlein. Oh, okay. So yeah. And he's like around and he would be like in his nineties, I think is <laughs> if you look up when he was born, it would be like 1998 and whatever, but it was kind of silly. And there's just all these weird like references, like to a character that appears to be like Osama bin Laden or something like that. Oh, it's dear. very, it, it wasn't very, it was kind of strange, but you know, there's one with George Custer. That was a good. That was a good story in the 1800s. I think you mentioned there was one with Chinese Gordon in it. Yeah, Chinese Gordon. He wants to like you know help like he fights the Mahdi in Sudan under like different circumstances or whatever like that. It was, I mean, I like Drac. It's a good. It's a good series of book stories, which mm. I I recommend. That may be a better way in some ways to get started off than the actual books. But yeah, the point is what we want to talk about is these books are crazy, but it's the background of the stories that. Like, we don't want to say, like, they're they're interesting books, like, they're yeah. intriguing, and we don't want to sound like we're going too too heavy on on S.M. Sterling, because, like, he does incredible world building. Oh, yes, yes. yes. Like, I read the first two books, and you directed me to read the appendices. Yeah, which and, are online, I think. Uh, yeah, they're online, and uh, honestly, I think the appendices might be, like, the thing to read. Like, for, yeah. forego the narrative and just read the, the, the massive dump of info in there, because yeah. there's so much. And he goes into everything, like a history of the whole world, so it talks yeah. about, because the world is different, like, America is massive. Yes. It it's the entire North American continent, Hawaii, the Philippines, and like all the Caribbean islands. Mm -hmm. So in various things, and there's other trends that he talks about, and he talks about like their system of military, how they, the, the weapons, their system of, of currency. It's really, really, the appendices are really well done. He even talks about like architectural trends. It's yeah. like, oh, Bauhaus never got off the ground. So, you know, there's like a Neo-Roman style here and it's, it's interesting. It, but in that, so we want to, we want to give the praise where it's due. Oh yeah, um, yeah. But like just this, the idea of how like you could, I don't know if you type in like Draca plausibility or like <laughs> what's wrong with the Draca series on the internet, you will find just an endless list of people doing what we're doing, which is criticizing a lot. <laughs> so, sp yeah. Specifically, like look up, I think, uh, dr uh, domination of the Draca head scratchers. And there's a, there's a good like wiki article that's just a point by point. This is dumb. This is dumb. This is dumb. This is crazy. Yeah. This makes no sense. <laughs> this is, this is weird, but it, it's kind of interesting or whatever. Yeah. But the point is, is that the Draca books are these fast is a, are a great look at alternate history. Like they're probably not like my my cup of tea exactly when it comes to alternate history because I may be a little bit more conservative in how I like it, which is more close to reality. But like you got to give S.M. Sterling credit for really going on a limb and yeah. really building a fascinating world, even though it's like bonkers. And and I, I and you know Matt, I'm gonna say that I think the bonkersness is is a large part of the appeal because yeah. I don't think this is setting out to be 100 percent accurate. In fact, S.M. Sterling himself has like said, you know, I feel really honored. Because people don't try to debunk Star Wars. They don't try to debunk so many other <laughs> yeah, works right, of right. literature. Yeah. Like, they go after me because I've created something interesting, something worth talking mm -hmm. about. And I think that's absolutely true. And I, and I think the bonkersness mm -hmm. is also part of the appeal because I think in a certain way this series is kind of like a horror series. Yeah. You know, you read it and you read about what the Drocker are doing and it's like, it's horrible. But you want to keep reading because you want to know what happens mm -hmm. next. Well, yeah, and he creates these interesting villains, this whole society, which is really fleshed out in his sort of like contradictory and 
and, and they're very much like an anti-America. It's the anti-American. I really think that's a really interesting concept, and it, it makes sense. These books were written in the '80s, so like the USSR is still around and all right. that stuff, and that I think that influenced a lot of how it was written. But it, it's fascinating that they that what he's doing is he creates like this is everything that America is not, mm -hmm. and basically he has the bad guys win, which he does the thing that so many movies and works of literature are just terrified of doing, which is letting the bad guy win, which right. may be the more interesting story. How, however, when yeah. you when you read the collection of all three books, they have like a frame narrative of a guy in our universe talking about it as an observer. So I mean, they do win, but it also is made clear that this is an alternate universe. Yeah, like, yeah. like this universe is totally screwed, but ours is kind of okay. Yeah, but it, it's it, yeah the, the the that's in the domination, which is I don't know if you can buy the books individually now, except maybe off of Amazon, like old mm. copies, like any new version. Like I read it in the form of the domination, which is a like all three books in one under one cover. All, but all three books minus Dracon. Yeah, minus Dracon and minus Dracos. But right. it's it, and it's minus the appendices, which is a real problem. Like I had to yeah, find those on well, my own. But the. The point is we want to say is that just talk about this and sort of don't want to sound too harsh because there are some things really worth criticizing because some of this stuff like from a sense point you just have to say this like I'm sorry this just doesn't makes no sense it, why it, is it like this it's like when you're watching a horror movie and like the slasher movie villain is chasing after someone and no matter how fast they run and no matter how slow the killer is the killer always ends up right behind them stabbing them in the back yeah. and that's that's very much like what this is and that's what he i think he kind of set out to do that and i think he said that is that this is what i was trying to do so mm -hmm. so don't take a, a world yeah. where everything went wrong yes absolutely it's a world where where everything has been skewed in the favor of the villains mm -hmm. and while that may not make sense from us make sense to us from like a story perspective like it makes it's a it's a bold choice as an author, and I yeah. admire that he was willing to do that and uh, give him props for coming up with something interesting and not just going with the traditional like the Germans won World War Two or right. this or the yeah. South won the Civil War. Like he created a whole society, which, and which, which is I think awesome, mm -hmm. like totally cool. Yeah, and I yeah, and I think it's also another good example of what we talked about before, which is that uh, yeah, history is not perfect and not very good, and there's a lot terrible that's happened, but. Boy, oh boy, it could have been a lot worse. <laughs> but apparently that involves steam cars. Yes, steam cars and dirigibles. Yes, the they cornerstone. Love they of... love dirigibles in this. <laughs> they talk a lot about dirigibles, and oh. it's a bit silly. But mm -hmm. that's that's okay. But the point is, is that it's entertaining. I, I mean, is it the greatest work of alternate history out there? No, but I, I tell you what. It will catch people's attention who are not like hardcore history people. And, you know, obviously it's caught in a lot of people's interest because if you look on the internet, you can see a million different people with their own skew on, on the Draka thing. Draka, like, yeah. oh, what if it was more realistic? Or what if the Draka were in this other universe too and they were together? <laughs> like, if you're into fan fiction, there's a <laughs> oh, whole God. heck of a lot of it out there. Yeah, but it's, um, it's a good, it's a fascinating topic and we just wanted to discuss it quickly because I remember reading it for the first time and I was just like, wow, like I can't put, I mean, this is nuts in like, like this is crazy, but I like can't put it down because this is just so <laughs> fascinating. But um, I think that's probably about it for this episode, trying yeah, to do this mini yeah. episode thing. But hopefully, if you're interested, try it out. I'm just going to warn you straight up: have kind of a strong stomach. You should have kind of a strong stomach when you read this. Uh, be ready for some crazy stuff, and just understand this may not be your cup of tea because this is a very distinct style. But yeah, we'll leave right. that up to you to decide. And uh, if you want to contact us, you can email us at. Uh, Tonkinet history at gmail.com. Give us any suggestions, any feedback. We really appreciate it. And yeah, I think, uh, I think this is Max signing off. And this is Matt signing off. Have a good day, guys.